I would say one of the top overarching themes of the listening tour was that the groups we talk to are often asked to fight some of the most polluting facilities and practices across the South from petrochemical plants to natural gas export to um, you know, agricultural and hog waste um, you know, really toxic, bad projects that, of course, these communities want to be fighting and are fighting. But what they told us is actually really motivating for them and that they wish they had a lot more space to focus on was, what are the alternatives? What are, what are the, the new, more equitable and clean economies that we want to build? What are the new um, societies in which everyone has access to clean air and clean water. How are we getting there? How are we building that? And that, that kind of proactive work um, is what really, uh, it, it, it's motivating and inspiring ways that keep people um, in these jobs and in these careers that, you know, we've, we've seen so much burnout in, we've, heard, we've seen so much turnover in, and, but funders are not necessarily giving groups the bandwidth to be building the good. Um, and so an asset-based frame to the work where we see offense as the best defense, <laughs> I think is one of the main messages that groups were relaying to us. There is, there is such an onslaught of issues that these groups are dealing with. Um, that one of the themes that we've really picked up on is the need for funders to acknowledge that collective care and well-being is a really important part of of what's needed to support all of this work. And a lot of groups talked about healing practices that can address trauma, that can address conflict. Um, that can address burnout and can address the, the racism and sexism, you know, the, the weathering that, that leaders are just facing on the daily, that that has to be part of what philanthropy is also supporting these groups to embody in their work.